Hey guys, guess who's back for the new year? Happy New Year, happy late Christmas, holidays, whatever. I know it's been a minute, but I'm back, New Year. I ain't gonna say new me because I think I had this here last time, but I'm a child. I ain't even, you know what? I ain't making no promises. <laughs> anyway, but I'm back for now. And what can I say? What a day. Y'all knew I was going to come out the woodwork for this, right? Y'all knew I was going to come out the woodwork for this. If it wasn't going to be for nothing else, it was going to be for what this day was. Okay? So, <laughs> oh, Lord. You know, we were all praying at the end of uh, last year, the 31st, the 30th. We're getting a little anxious because it's been one hell of a year in so many ways. And we're just ready for it to be done. And we there was this almost like exhaustion we battle weariness that we had from 2020 because 2020 whooped our asses okay all of us across the board in some way shape form or fashion has whooped our ass okay we're, we're tired and so we was looking forward to 2021 to a certain degree i know with me i was looking for i was like battle weary tired of 2020 ready for it to be over but with a lot of trepidation to 2021, because I'm like, can can shit get worse than what it is now? I mean, of course it can. As my grandma used to say, well, I'm out of focus, y'all. As my grandma used to say, it can always be worse. And uh, I think today proved that. <laughs> oh, Lord. Okay, so it started off as a great day. I want, first of all, congratulate Georgia. Y'all, y'all showed up, showed out. Y'all, Stacey Abrams deserves, if, if there's going to be any, if there was going to be an MVP for this whole campaign season or whatever this, it, it would be her. So um, definitely, I don't know if we want to say a shout out, but definitely congratulations, Georgia. Like I said, y'all, y'all showed, y'all came up like this, you know, um, <clears throat> so we we had that we were in celebratory mood we had that we we got control of the house and the senate <sighs> people my color are we really surprised though like seriously i don't think it's one person my color darker lighter whatever of color that's surprised by any of this i'm not i'm not am i absolutely disgusted yes as an American, more so even as a black person, because we all know every black person in America right now has said this today. Had it been us, do I need to complete that? But I'm going to go ahead for y'all who might not understand. Had it been us, we wouldn't have been able, a, a, a big toenail would not have been able to make it to that bottom step of that Capitol without bodies being dropped. And everybody knows this, right? But are we surprised? We're not surprised. And everybody wants to talk about how un-American this is. And yes, at the fundamental of what America is supposed to represent, yes, it is un-American. And what did they think they was going to accomplish? Like, what did they think they was going to accomplish? This shit, it's like, you did all this for what? For nothing. He's president. Biden is going to be your president. <laughs> what the? F anyway. <sighs> so everybody's all up in arms about it's, it's not American. This is the most un-American thing that, that, you know, it's a dark day in America. It's, no, this is completely America. From the black perspective, are we really surprised? No, this is, this is, this is the most American thing. And yeah, y'all, I know, I know I'm going to get some haters for this one if y'all even watching anymore. I know, y'all don't come for me. I said it. Yeah, it's the most American. This It's been America. It's been America. That's, that's what it's been for us. That's why not one black single, not one single black person surprised by any of this. Like I said, are we disgusted? Absolutely. Do we condone it? Absolutely not. But are we surprised? No. <laughs> I don't know what they thought they was going to accomplish. I don't know what they, they... Who knows? Whatever. I it just the... I don't... <laughs> you know why I'm struggling with this? Because I, I don't, it's like, what can I say? Like, I'm not surprised. It's 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 a dark day. Absolutely. It's, it's, it's scary to what lengths these people will go through. But at the same time, we've had a asshole fan of flames for four years so are we really that surprised 
I saw this coming. I knew something like this was that he that was that was capable of happening. So, you know, I don't know. It did, I'm just. <laughs> I, it's on one hand is it really is kind of scary the level of of I don't even have the word for it the depths of the lows that his supporters will go to is scary to me um and that way is scary um but like I said it was almost expected he fanned the flames for four years he riled them up for four years <laughs> now they're about to lose their precious leader so now they're panicking. I think the only thing that came of this really is that I think the average maybe toe the line middle America or white America really got to see what privilege was up close and personal. This privilege that nobody wants to talk about. This privilege that you say we make up in our heads. Now, if y'all don't see what that was for what it was, by now, it ain't no... Well, I stopped arguing with y'all a long time ago. I ain't got to argue with no Trump support. I ain't about to argue with... And I ain't even about to argue with people who don't... who Just just ignorance. I'm just not. Because if you ain't open... If, if, if 2020 ain't taught y'all white people nothing yet about race relations and what's acceptable and what's not, it ain't, I ain't nothing I can tell you on here or in person that's going to help that situation. But I hope y'all got to see it for what it was. I hope it opened up your eyes a little bit. And I wouldn't be surprised if it didn't. Them blindness is heavy. They've been heavy for 400 years. Hmm. So in that respect, yeah, it's it's scary. But like I said, it's it's been the fabric of this country since almost the beginning. I mean, look how this country was gotten in the first place. You know? Good old America. Anyway, I'm going to get off. Oh, in terms of what they thought they were supposed to be doing, I'm watching CNN. I was watching CNN right before I, I started this. Um, in terms of what they th- thought they were going to accomplish, it really y'all shot yourselves in the foot because now the, the Republicans that were going to object to uh, the certification or the vote count or whatever the certification process is going on right now for Joe Biden to become president, now they've said they're not going to object. They just want to speed this thing along and get it done with, basically. So it's y'all shot yourselves in the foot, stupid. Y'all don't scare them people. <laughs> you don't scare them people. Now them people like, oh, now you open up your eyes. Now you see what a maniac this man has been. Now you don't see what this man is capable of doing. So now it's like, oh, let's hurry up and get this process over with. And, you know, for the sake of the country and for the sake of the people. No, nah, this motherfucker don't scare y'all. Y'all see... <laughs> so all you stupid ass is scaling walls and breaking windows and and all that y'all ain't do nothing but scare them people into vo- and getting biting in there quicker so congratulations y'all lost <laughs> oh lord anyway i don't know do i think this is the end no do i think there's more to come in the upcoming days yes but we'll see how this thing plays out. Trust me, anything like more happen, I'll be right on it. Well, I ain't gonna say right on it, but <laughs> I shouldn't laugh. But I think I mean I know it's it's a serious matter. I know I shouldn't be laughing, but it's almost comical in its in its hypocrisy, and it's almost comical in its ludicrousy at this point. And like I said, from watching from the brown perspective, we ain't surprised. Y'all white America, middle America Who think this land is so great That's surprised and shocked We ain't moving on So I haven't really discussed Power book to ghost With y'all I think I may have touched on it a little bit But I didn't go into it in depth episode Like episode like I did with the last Few episodes of Power Um, But honey, the season finale just aired and honey, let me tell you, they have a fan in me. Um, It was everything. It was almost one of the best. I'm not going to say the best of the whole series, but one of the top three episodes, I would say, of the whole series. And I'm counting back from season one of the original Power. It was a really well written and really, really good episode. Um... 
I know a lot of people were skeptical. Even I was at first, but I wasn't, I was willing to give it a try. And I think I had said that before. As long as, to me, my thing is the writing. The characters are great. Yes. Do we have our favorite characters are reattached? Y'all always know. I've been seeing Tommy anyway. Ghost ain't never been, I ain't never been that impressed with Ghost. I mean, I liked them. Gonna be, uh, no, actually I didn't like them. <laughs> so, you know, I could, whatever. So, uh, because I don't think I was that attached to him, I didn't take the death like that, like his fanatical fans did, you know what I'm saying? Um, so I was willing to give Tariq a chance and give the series a chance, you know what I'm saying? So as long as she keeps doing, as long as she keeps writing the way that she's been writing for power, it was going to be okay. For That was my way of thinking. Like to me, it's all about the writing and the storytelling and the way the story is told. And 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 that's, that's what I care about. The characters, yes, I care about the characters. But if you're having the same woman, him, the show that we loved before, and she's helming this one, I had faith, or at least I wanted to have faith, that it was going to be okay. And honey, it's definitely, it's definitely hooked me. I was yelling at that TV as much as I was at the original power. Like it was everything. I, I, I never had a problem with Tariq. I always understood Tariq. You know what I'm saying? I didn't hate that boy for killing his daddy. You know what I'm saying? If we were talking about just character wise on TV, I understood why he did it. And I said it was poetic, just and it made perfect sense for him to do it. So I was uh, really looking forward to see how she would make his transfer. Because that's where I saw she was going with this. It was that she was just going to turn him into a little ghost. And for me, I thought he was going to be a better version of ghost. Now, I know I'm about to piss y'all off with that one. Yes, I said it. I said it before and I'm going to say it again. I think he's going to be a better version of his, his, of his dad because he has his mom and his dad in him. And he may not be as street smart as let's say Ghost was because Ghost came up in the hood, but the boy got some smarts. He's intelligent and he's moving. So um, definitely, definitely love the show. Tommy, honey, they brought my baby back. That's, that, that made the whole episode for me. I was, that I was, when he said, I want all the smoke. Oh my God. I, you just, the minute I heard him speak, I'm like, Tommy. Oh, oh, that's why I love this show. Um, Monet, she's growing on me. I actually like the bitch. Like my favorite line in the episode, one of my favorite lines in the episode was when she confronted Tommy at the grave. And when he said, who riding with you that got balls enough to pull a strap on me? And she said, well, I ain't got to have balls, bitch, just to steal in the upper hand. I was like, oh, I was like, that's the hardest line in the show. The hardest line in the show. But uh, I, I, I was struggling to like her at first, or I was, I'm not going to say like her. I like her as a character. I was struggling to like Mary <laughs> as her at first because her acting was very stiff. But you can tell towards the end of the season, she's really grown into Monet. And so I think right now she would be the perfect person to play Monet. And, um, you know, I don't necessarily agree with her in, in the whole kid situation and having your kid, you know, at least for... The first part of his life, Ghost and Tasha did at least try to protect the kids from that lifestyle. You know what I'm saying? Monet just throwing them all in there. You know what I'm saying? And you know, you you don't turn your son away and you don't held a gun to your son. Like, I mean, I know this is coming from the woman who who was okay with Tariq killing his daddy. So, I mean, I know I shouldn't have any issues with any parental child stuff going on with guns and stuff. But I don't... She just seems so hard for me as a mother. It's like, damn, do you show them kids any love? Do you smile, bitch? Like, can you get, can I get an I love you? A kiss on the forehead? A good night, baby? A, a, you know, but no, it's all do this. And who the fuck is the boss? And then I'm like, Lord, but no, I still, I love her though. I, I really, I really, I like the setup and like where they're going with this, especially with them, uh, Tariq making himself indispensable to them. Um, one of the things I did appreciate, I was watching, the show, the episode before that one, um, I have just watched it again. And one of the things I did appreciate about Tariq is when he was willing to die for his mom, when he knew that he had that giving away the money he owed to Monet to Epiphany was going to cost him his life. And he did it anyway, because he knew that was a chance of getting his mama free. Um, and to see how he took it like a G and was like, yeah, I know what's coming. I know you got to do what you got to do, but my mama comes first. You know what I'm saying? Um, I, I like Tariq. I don't mind him. I like I like what Courtney's doing with him. I like where he's going with this. Um, I, I love how he played the motherfuckers on the stand, though, because when they said he was going to confess, I'm like, oh, hell, because they know how much he loved his mama. I really thought he was going to do it. And then when he flipped that script on them and said, I saw you with the gun, and you, how did you get that? Uh, 
Honey, played them for, and I know Tamika has something to do with that. Played them like a, uh, that was one of my favorite parts of the episode. It was just a fire-ass episode from beginning to end, basically. It really, really was. Um, To bring out that closure between him and Tommy. It set Tommy up, obviously, for his stuff. Um, To him finally really coming into his own and realizing that he's like his dad, I think for me was satisfying. It was like, because it was that whole season of that internal struggle of, of is he ghost? Is he really a monster? Is he really... And for him to kind of finally come into that and, and own it and be like, yeah, I am that nigga. I am that monster. Now I get why my daddy did the shit that he did. You know what I'm saying? I think it adds extra um, depth to him, especially with him killing Jabari. You know what I'm saying? Now, Jabari was getting on my nerves. And at first I was like, is Tariq really going to do that? But then when he was like, I am a... You no, know, when he told him... I am the bad spot. I was like, oh shit, that sound like ghosts. I'm like, there go ghosts. <laughs> That's the first thing I said. Like, all right, talk that shit to Reed. Talk about I am the bad spot. I said, oh, okay. And then we said, oh, when it comes down to me, my family in the good, it always comes down to me, my family in the good. I was like, that is ghost right there. That's that's some shit ghosts would say. So he definitely uh, is his father's child. He's definitely coming to his own, and he's and he's definitely owning that shit. And then when he told his mom, "I am a killer too," and Tasha had to eat that shit, like this is what you made your boy into, or you helped facilitate that. This is the man that your that your child is now. You know what I'm saying? And he's and he's finally come to accept that for what he is. So it's like, where do we go from here? So I can't wait for season two. It's definitely up there in terms of the writing, as in terms of goals. I know people, I mean, in terms of the original power, I know people still stuck on that or whatever, but I think Courtney did a hell of a job with this. I really did start off slow. It did, but them last three, four episodes was lit. And, and it really shows great storytelling. So I can't wait to see what season two comes up with. I'm not quite sure how I feel about Raising Canaan. I mean, if, if it's part of the power world, I'll give it a shot. I don't think I'm really going to be into it like that because for me, this was a continuation of the story from power. It's just told from a different perspective now. Now it's being told from Tariq's perspective, you know what I'm saying? And to see what changes and transformation he was going to go through and see him struggle with that and see him finally become his father or or understand or, or have some understanding of what his father had to go through. For me, that's a continuation of power. So it was a lot more easier for me to get into. I'm not sure about the whole Raising Canaan thing. Um, definitely, of course, you all know I love me some Tommy. So I'm definitely going to check that out. I'm not sure if I'm going to do the whole Tate thing. I don't think he's worth a series or whatever, but whatever um but anyway that's my take on power definitely or ghost whatever i still call, i call it power too <laughs> i ain't got time for power book two go power two Tariq's power whatever i'm definitely here for all of it as Tommy said i'm here for all that smoke so courtney hats off to you still wonderful storytelling definitely into it speaking of storytelling that's a great segue into um how 2021 is starting off not with just this bull crap here but we lost a um his uh um one of the greatest figures in modern african-american literature and that is eric jerome dickey r.i.p i was so sad to hear that y'all like y'all literally like i <clears throat> loved to read now I do I read as much as I used to know and I absolutely hate that but I grew up in a house where books were very important from the encyclopedias dictionaries to we had Langston Hughes or Neil Hertz in the house we had um oh my lord I can't think of all the other Maya Angelou that's what I grew up on um James Baldwin um Donald Groins <clears throat> those were the authors that I grew up uh reading Alex Haley, I read Roots in One Summer. So books were huge. You know, my grandmother taught me a love of literature. And so um, one of my favorite authors, if not my favorite authors, was Eric Jerome Dickey. I'm not going to say I've read most of his books because that man has a lot of books. But I've read quite a few of them. Um, one of my all-time series, my all-time characters in the book, uh, in literature, is the Gideon series, uh, Sleeping with Enemies, Waking Up with Strangers. I read that. Resurrecting Midnight was awesome. I didn't read the last one. I didn't even know he had came out with it till like a year or two later. And I still haven't read it only because I wanted to catch up and read the Gideons because it's been years since I've read Gideon, over 10 years. And so I wanted to catch up with that and then read that. Um, but definitely one of the greatest characters in in my literary library a personal literary library was Gideon and I loved him so it was just definitely it was just sad I just 
Uh, that one hurt me because he was definitely my favorite author. Definitely my favorite author. I think I've read more of his books than anybody else's. Um, besides, I was into Dean Koontz for a while, so I've read a lot of his books too. But they're neck and neck. I think I may have may have read more of Eric Jerome Dickey's. In fact, I had just read one of his books a few months ago. Um, it wasn't part of that series. I forgot the name of it. I can't think of it right now. But anyway, it's just sad. But if y'all are into reading and y'all know who he is, um, please pick up one of his books. He is his his the his way with the pen. He used that that man had me up all night, many of nights before I became a mother and a wife, but many of nights all night long reading his books and trying to finish his books. So um he's brought great joy and great pleasure into my life. And just thank you. Thank you and rest in power, Eric Jerome Dickey. Um, I think the last thing I want to get to, because I didn't want to make this super long. Uh, let y'all know y'all miss me. I miss y'all. <laughs> anyway. Um, was, oh, this whole thing that I, on Instagram about Caesar from Black Ink Crew. Um, I watch him. And or I've been watching Black Age Crew since the first season. Um, it's interesting, whatever. It's ratchet. It is what it is. But I do watch it, so I know who Caesar is. Um, and I think apparently his daughter had went on Instagram and said that he had abused her or beat her in some way, um, and that fractured their relationship. And then instead of him coming out and saying anything about it, he lets his girlfriend speak. And she said some pretty dog ass disrespectful stuff to a child. Now I'm not gonna speak on the situation of what happened with Caesar and her, and and because uh, that's between father and child. I don't know what kind of father he's been. It's based. We don't know what goes on behind them them cameras. Um, I don't know how disrespectful she was. I know I grew up in a household. If you got too big for your britches, you got slapped the fuck down. You know, you got your back. What we said with mama uh, back in the day, I'm gonna break your back. And that's exactly what the hell they tried to do. So I'm not, I ain't gonna get into all that in terms of discipline or the way he disciplined his child. Do I agree with it? Do I think it's something I would do with my own? No, I'm not done. Bye. I'm about to okay. Give me a second. Five. <laughs> Sorry, y'all. <clears throat> give me five minutes. Sorry, y'all. Life of a mom. Tried to steal a few minutes, and you see that didn't work. But anyway, back to that. I'm not gonna get into all that. Like I said, would it be personally something I will do? I don't know. Honestly, I don't know. Given the way that I was raised, that old school, you know, children are seen, not heard. Am I more lax than I grew up? Definitely. But I don't know what my daughter at 16 is going to look like and how disrespectful I feel she can be. I don't know. So I ain't going to get into that. What I do have a problem with is, though, that the girlfriend has something to say and that he let his girlfriend dog his daughter out on social media. Now, who the fuck does that? Make that make sense. You know what I'm saying? Like, that should have been handled privately. If the girl wants to speak out and say something, Caesar should have said something or said, respect my family's privacy while I deal with this matter or, you know, whatever's between me and my daughter if she felt the need to come out. But to have your girlfriend come out and say some dog-ass shit about your daughter, what does that say to you as a man? Like, no. After that, no, that's unacceptable. That was a matter between you and your child and the child's mother. The bitch ain't, the other bitch ain't have shit to do with nothing to do. Even if she was there and broke it up, she ain't got shit to do with it or nothing to say on social media about it. That is your child at the end of the day. Now, I may be, like I said, I will say the one thing about my damn mama. Now, she may be able to punch the shit out of us and, and, and break our backs and break us down or whatever it is that she did with us in terms of discipline us. But goddamn it, wasn't nobody else going to do it. No, not none, not nan. But her, but Paula. Okay. So that was some trash ass shit, Caesar. Like that that wasn't okay on any level to let your little piece of ass that's only gonna last for two fucking seconds come out and say anything about your damn child. Period. Anyway, so y'all let me know y'all take. Let me get on out of here because as you see, they're not going to let me have no kind of peace. <laughs> and I got to put her to bed and that's what she waiting on. But anyway, happy new year, as I said before. What a way to start 21. Well, let's see. <laughs> Already the shenanigans. Jumanji has started. <laughs> Phase two. Phase two of Jumanji has started. Okay. Uh, but yeah, if y'all want to, as always, drop a comment, like, subscribe, give me y'all's take. Let me know what y'all think. Y'all ain't got to agree.
I'm for any opinion. It don't have to be mine. It don't have to be shared. If you love it, great. If you don't, even more great. I'm up for it. So until next time, y'all, let's talk.